Hi, my name is Puneet. Welcome to my channel, Everyday Space. In today's video, we're going to discuss about SpaceX's new project called Starlink and what will it do to change the world. And also, we'll be discussing how it differs from other internet providers. So let's get started. Internet, 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 internet. In our day-to-day -day lives, we are very dependent on the internet, like for education, entertainment, and even work. With the help of this internet, we are able to connect with friends and family across the globe. Without the internet, we might, not, we might be disconnected from the world. Also, without the internet, you wouldn't be able to watch this video on YouTube right now. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed and liked this video, please do so now. Currently, there are many internet providers across the globe that connect us to the internet via fiber optics and cables. Even though there are so many internet providers, more than 40% of people don't have access to the internet because they live in rural or remote areas. Internet providers are not able to build the infrastructure needed to connect these people to the internet in those rural and remote areas because of the high cost in building them. This is why more than 40% of the people across the globe don't have access to the internet. This is where SpaceX comes in. SpaceX is aiming to connect these 40% of the people to the internet using satellites. SpaceX is claiming to launch satellites into space that can give internet anywhere. This will be better than fiber optics or cables in these circumstances because you don't need to build an expensive cell tower or run fiber optics through remote areas. Instead, you can just have a router and connect it to the satellites. SpaceX started developing the Starlink satellites in 2015. They have been developing for four years and have finally launched their first batch in 2019. Every Falcon 9 launch that they do with the Starlink satellites on board, they launch 60 of them at the same time. So, so far as of March, May 2020, they have launched 420 satellites to low Earth orbit. This is not the first time anyone has launched satellites to provide internet for people. Companies such as Iridium, OneWeb, and HughesNet have already launched their own satellites into orbit. But the main difference is that these satellites are placed in a geostationary or geosynchronous orbit, which is more than 30,000 kilometers off the surface of the Earth. That is why major airlines and cruise ships use these satellites to get internet because they cannot rely on fiber optics or cables when they're out in the sky or on the seas, just like we do. That is why they use these satellites. But the main difference is that these Starlink satellites are in low Earth orbit, which means they're only 500 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. This is makes a huge difference for the internet. Let's now take a look at what Elon Musk is talking about the Starlink project. I mean, the, the, the whole purpose of SpaceX is really to help make life multiplanetary. Um, and then, but the revenue potential of launching, rock, launching satellites, servicing the space station and whatnot, that's, you know, t taps out around $3 billion a year. Um, but I think uh, providing broadband is, is more like an order of magnitude more than that, probably 30 billion a year um, as, as a rough approximation. Um, and we're still like probably below 5% at that point. So it's not like, I want to be clear, like, it's not like Starlink is some huge threat to telcos. I want to be super clear, it is not. <laughs> uh, in fact, it will be helpful to telcos because uh, Starlink will, will, will um, serve the hardest to serve customers that uh, telcos otherwise have trouble doing with, with landlines or even with, with uh, cell radio stations. You know, like I said previously, SpaceX has already launched 420 satellites into low Earth orbit with plans to launch more than 40,000 in the next few years. So why does SpaceX even need this many satellites? The real answer is it's their orbits. SpaceX is launching in low Earth orbit 
while other internet satellites are usually in geostationary orbit. In geostationary orbit, you only need around 5 satellites to cover the entire globe at once. This is because each satellite moves along perfectly with the Earth and, and covers the same place through its entire lifetime. But the, orbits, but the satellites in low Earth orbit are traveling at 27,000 kilometers per hour to stay in orbit. This is why they can't cover the same place because they're moving much faster than the Earth. This is why they need more satellites to cover the entire globe simultaneously. So another big difference is called the latency. The latency is the time it takes a signal from Earth to go satellite and back. This latency is really important as it basically determines how fast your signal is. For, for satellites that are in geostationary orbit, the latency takes around 240 seconds, milliseconds, to get from Earth to the satellite and back. 240 milliseconds is a lot, but the usual operating speeds of those geostationary satellites is more like 400 to 600 milliseconds. This is 12 times slower than your average cable connection here on Earth. This is where SpaceX plays a huge key role. SpaceX's satellites are only orbiting at around 500 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. This is why the latency speed is much lower than those of in geostationary orbit. The latency speed is only about 20 milliseconds. Elon Musk is aiming to get even below that. 20 seconds is a huge roll as it is mo faster than most fiber optic cables here on Earth. This plays a huge role for businesses where every second counts. This is a very fast latency network. Let's now see what Elon Musk is saying about the latency of these Starlink satellites. Um, well, it will be a, it should be a good experience because it'll be very low latency. Mm -hmm. um, and we're targeting latency below 20 milliseconds. Uh, so somebody could, could, could play a, a fast response video game uh, at a competitive level, right. like that's the threshold for uh, the latency. So the biggest question is, how do this many satellites communicate with each other to send signals much farther than in your own country, like across the Pacific or across the Atlantic? So the main method of these satellites communicating with each other is lasers. They will shoot lasers at each other and send signals to each other using the lasers so that they can either give it directly back to the ground or even send a laser to another satellite to successfully deliver the message. So far all the 420 satellites that have launched so far have not have any prototype version of the lasers yet but are supposed to um, put them on later versions of these satellites. So lasers may not be the only way of communicating to one another. SpaceX is also planning to use ground stations on the ground where the satellites can shoot lasers back on the ground and it will and then the ground station would send a signal or laser back to another satellite. This still take may take some more time, but it is surely faster than the fiber optics because the laser is traveling at the speed of light through a vacuum where there is no glass. So it is much faster still than the fiber optics if it's even using the ground station. If they have many ground stations and ground ships in the oceans, then you can truly send a signal from anywhere in the traveling satellites. But what are the main challenges of communicating with lasers? Well, the most obvious one is that they are traveling at 27,000 kilometers per hour and they are in orbit. So it's going to be hard for a satellite to, protect, to project a trajectory of one satellite as it moves through at 27,000 kilometers per hour. And it has to go exactly and it has to map out the quickest thing. So I'm guessing they're going to need a lot of computers to do that mapping. This is a huge challenge, but I'm sure SpaceX will find ways to overcome this. 
So this is the main way of satellites communicating to each other using lasers and ground stations. This method is sh really faster than fiber optics, which makes it a better use for its latency. So now let's take a look at the two possible downsides of the Starlink project. So the first possible downside is that the space junk problem. I already made two videos about this, so be sure to check them out to further understand in detail. So the space junk problem is that so far ever in human history throughout all countries, we have only launched 10,000 satellites into orbit so far. SpaceX is planning to triple that amount by sending 40,000. So this is going to be a lot of satellites and it can create a huge space junk problem. This is why NASA is requiring a specific policy to deorbit these satellites after their intended lifespan of five to seven years. So let's see how this deorbit policy works. So after their intended mission, SpaceX will put use their onboard Krypton thrusters on board these Starlink satellites to put them in a disposal orbit of a lower orbit. And then after a year of the completion of their mission, they, they will then burn up in the atmosphere. 95% of these materials of the Starlink satellites will burn up in the atmosphere. But 5%, such as silicon composites, which are used for the laser system will not because of their melting point is so high at almost a 2700 degrees Celsius melting point. But this is their strict policy for deorbiting. This will help reduce the space junk problem because SpaceX is successfully deorbiting their satellites. So the next major problem is that the light pollution. Astronomers are complaining that these satellites are getting in their photos and that they see small dots in their photos or streaks and they don't know if those are satellites or stars. This is a huge problem as astronomy is also a key role in space. That is why SpaceX is actively working with these astronomers to create new ways to reduce this light pollution. Some ways are including that they include is that changing the angle of the solar panels so it won't reflect so much light back to the surface. Another one is painting light absorbing material paint on most of the spacecraft so it'll absorb most of the material and they will also decrease the albedo on the spacecraft. This is the two possible downsides that SpaceX has already considered a good way and not make them such downsides anymore. I believe that Starlink will finally connect the whole world with this new internet service. I hope that they will give this at affordable prices without compromising the speed and reliability. This will finally connect those, especially in the remote areas, to the internet and help connect friends and family. So thanks for watching and if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe and like.